want to ask first about one that I had never heard of until recently called Actor Studio that ran for about a year, uh, 1948 through 1949, I see. She did several shows there called Spreading the News, Country Full of Sweden, Mr. Mummery's Suspicion. A World Full of Swedes. Ah, that's Leslie how books... Nielsen. <laughs> <laughs> a World Full of Swedes. Yeah. Uh, what was that? But the Actor Studio, uh, to make a little money to support our academic activities, did this, and I think it was done on, on ABC, up in the, what they put, called the, the Dairy. Uh, it had been a dairy. No, uh, it had been an armory, a stable. Uh, big, a lot of space, tall ceilings and so forth, so they converted it to uh, television studios and offices. And the dairy was CBS, was further west, it had been a dairy, but you could tell where you were by the smell. <laughs> no kidding. See, in the, in the beginning, the very beginning, like Worthington Minor was at CBS and Fred Coe was at NBC, and they had two ideas of how television should be done. One was subjective at CBS and objective at NBC, is that the, at CBS the camera would move around and find the story, but over at NBC, we would do the story and the camera would be there and follow the story that way instead of an inquiring camera. And uh, it was a different style and uh, there were different directors. Uh, Fred Coe, Delbert Mann, uh, Stan Quinn, uh, Gordon Duff and others at NBC and then at CBS, uh, Frank Schaffner, R Ralph Nelson, uh, Tony Minor, uh, Neil Brenner, Sidney Lumet. Uh, did a lot of uh, shows there, the Suspense, Web, so forth, Friday, half hour shows, and Bob Stevens, who started Suspense, <clears throat> and uh, they called him the Raving Maniac because it was very tough to do a show like that once a week, to rehearse it and uh, get it on the air, and so he would very often come down on the floor and uh, give directions. And as a matter of fact, he came down on the floor once and he said to me, we forgot to identify the so-and-so, so-and-so person. Well, how can I do that? He said, well, do it on the telephone. So on air, I took directions and, and wrote a, a few lines to identify the character that was anonymous until then. Other times, uh, we would, because the timing wasn't so exact, we'd say, you, ha you have to get off the air in 57 minutes, you know, uh, and uh, to read for time for the opening and the closing. And uh, we were doing a show at uh, CBS, and uh, there was an actor who had no experience with television, only theater. And uh, we rehearsed, and he would go along like that, and the, the director came down to me at the end of the second act, and he said, we're 10 minutes over. Well, we had arranged sometimes to take air cuts that we'd say, all right, here's one, two, and three. You have to memorize those cuts. Meaning? Says you have to cut a scene or cut something like that. You so would that, get a signal that the show yeah. was long. And uh, that particular show, uh, they told me we had, we had to make up time, so I had to figure out, we had prearranged, we'll cut this, because that's a chunk, and it's show can stand without it, but it'd be better with it. And so I realized this, and on air, I took a cut, and the camera people knew about it because they were in the booth saying, now do so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so. but the actors didn't know. And the actor came to me when there was a commercial break, and he said, you cut my scene. I said, we were running over. But there was a lot of that going on, of course.